స్టార్ హాస్పిటల్స్ బంజారా హిల్స్ తో పాటు ఇప్పుడు ఫైనాన్షియల్ డిస్ట్రిక్ట్ లో కూడా హలో ఆల్ వెల్కమ్ టు ఆర్ టీవీ నేను మీ కౌశల్య ఈ రోజు మనతో పాటు క్లినికల్ హెమటాలజిస్ట్ డాక్టర్ యోగలక్ష్మి గారు ఉన్నారు తనతో మాట్లాడి హెమటాలజీ గురించి మరిన్ని విషయాలు మనం తెలుసుకుందాం నమస్తే మ్యామ్ హౌ ఆర్ యూ వాట్ ఈస్ దిస్ హెమటాలజిస్ట్ వాట్ ఈస్ ఇట్ అబౌట్ yeah hematology uh, is a field where everyone doesn't know what is hematology actually <laughs> hematology is something to do with the blood and we as clinical hematologist we treat some diseases of the blood okay either it can be some benign disorders that is there can be some problems of uh, hemoglobin there can be problems of platelets there can be problems of white blood cells okay and apart from that there are blood cancers some cancers called lymphomas and myelomas we deal all with these cancers okay uh, basically we treat the patients with these problems and also we are specialized in to do transplantation especially bone marrow transplantation okay and uh, something called as stem cell transplantation which is also an advanced version of bone marrow transplantation uh, these days we are seeing many people are affected with anemia Mm. Uh, i mean hemoglobin loss of hemoglobin or what what we can call okay. yeah how it, it can be treated i mean uh, prevented or not yeah surely anemia can be prevented there are many types of anemia yeah uh, like uh, anemia may there can be because of nutritional deficiency okay like we don't take proper iron we don't take proper vitamin b12 like folic acid these are all something which is present in the foodstuffs which help to build hemoglobin okay so we can prevent such kind of anemias okay if you are taking a proper food which is rich in iron especially pregnant women and growing children and also menstruating women they need they require lot of iron okay so iron can be present in some foodstuffs like uh, non veg and also apart from non veg vegetarian foods like green leafy vegetables and uh, also in something called dates uh your resins uh, all those things have iron so okay. iron rich foods if you are taking that can prevent iron deficiency anemia okay whereas some anemias like aplastic anemia that all is occurring by nature okay. with some problems uh, some bone marrow problems those kind of anemias is difficult to prevent okay so if one child has a thalassemia thalassemia major uh if for the second child that can be prevented yeah you can prevent like now actually the guideline says all pregnant women should be screened whether they have a thalassemia gene or not okay not al- not at least gene level you have some blood test called hplc where you can find that this patient this uh, woman who is pregnant may be a carrier of thalassemia mm-hmm. thalassemia is a genetic disease okay so thalassemia comes from uh, genes when both the genes are affected okay every person in the uh, world has uh, two genes for every trait yeah like every feature in the body we have some two two genes in the uh, dna but uh, sometimes this two genes also if it is affected then thalassemia can occur okay whereas uh, if uh, carriers we uh, in case of carriers only one of the gene will be affected okay one of the gene which uh, produces hemoglobin like beta gene we say sometimes alpha gene that will be affected okay. if one of the gene is affected we call them carrier or trait and if both the genes are affected we call mm, they will have the disease okay so this thalassemia can be prevented if you have already one child with thalassemia the second for the second child at least when the woman is pregnant itself we have to see whether the baby inside the uh, mother's uterus is affected with uh, thalassemia or not that can be seen by taking some test called uh, chorionic villus sampling okay. that will be done in first 3 months so if at all the baby is uh, affected then we can go for options like uh, abortions if they are willing uh, other than that if there is if it is not a natural conception if it is uh, only uh, like uh, in vitro fertilization okay. like that all you might have heard uh, oh, yeah, yeah. artificial fertilizations so in those cases even before implanting that embryo inside the uterus you can check whether that embryo is affected or not okay. and then we can uh prevent those pregnancies only healthy 
uh, embryo ko we will um, just implant inside the uterus okay so these days we also heard about this uh, blood cancer and all and previously it also there but what are the causes of blood cancer is there any actually till now there are no causes found for uh, cancer uh, blood cancer mm -hmm. blood cancer occurs when the usually our uh, red blood cells white blood cells platelets these are all present in the blood and these come from the mother cells called stem cells okay. and that stem cells are present in the bone marrow bone, yeah. and uh, bone marrow stem cells when they get affected with some hit it can be something like radiation it can be okay. something like some medicines or drugs okay. so if it gets some mutations in those things that can change into a cancer okay. so that is one of the reason but why this uh, which medicine will cause we have no uh, only no. certain chemotherapy agents can cause cancers okay. but it is very rare not all the cancers are explained by those things okay. uh, some cancers can be inherited in blood cancer it is very rare to have an inherited type of cancer okay uh, but usually in other cancers there are uh, many inherited varieties like breast cancer ovarian cancer okay. like that but in blood cancers those kind of uh, preventable causes are very less okay so what would be the symptoms there of these i mean a blood blood cancer what would be the symptoms uh, yeah uh, usually uh, when the blood gets uh, formed from the bone marrow Uh, that stem cells are forming all the three kinds of blood cells okay when the stem cells get affected they become cancerous cells okay. so this cancerous cells will multiply at a higher rate okay than the normal cells okay. so when this cancerous cells proliferate they fill the bone marrow okay there is no place for the normal cells to be produced okay so when they fill the bone marrow when the um, cells which are coming outside the bone marrow to the blood are less you can have anemia you can have a low platelet count so all these will cause some fatigue weakness uh, when you are walking for some distance there will be some breathlessness uh, and uh, if platelets are reduced then there can be bleeding spots especially in the skin and also from the gums like that it can bleed and uh, next thing is wbcs when they are not in a adequate quantity like adequate quantity also and if they are excess also but not good wbcs are there it's only cancer cells are there okay. then it cannot fight the body cannot fight against the inf uh, infections and there can be fevers prolonged fevers not explainable uh, it cannot find the cause of the fever so these are all the symptoms of the blood cancers if a baby i mean a baby umbilical cord has stem cells right if we preserve them can we use them for further uh usually there is a misconception that we can use further okay uh, you can use only in certain types of diseases mm -hmm. like if you are storing the umbilical cord blood it has lot of stem cells but the quantity of stem cells which are there for an adult if if one adult like uh, father or mother is affected with the blood cancer okay and the baby's blood um, uh, umbilical cord blood has been preserved already yeah. this uh, mother and father's weight will be so much yeah. that this one umbilical cord unit will not be enough to support the stem cells required for them okay. in case of future stem cell transplantation okay but this umbilical cord cells can be useful for some pediatric uh, population like some children uh, say within 5 years within 6 years if at all they require bone marrow transplantation for anything that time we can use but usually for uh, for a common public uh, for a adult person one unit of umbilical cord is not that not much enough. useful okay so commercially speaking uh, many people are promoting umbilical cord uh, blood to uh, be yeah. stored but umbilical cord stem cells can be stored if it is a kind of public banking okay uh, like uh, i can use umbilical my umbilical cord stem cells to anyone i can donate if it is like that then it will be okay mm -hmm. but uh, some registries are made for those things but we don't have that system in india okay. so mostly the umbilical cord uh, storage will be not that useful so uh, in in blood i mean in blood checkup we are we have been seeing this uh, ipt something ITP. itp sorry itp uh, levels what is this itp itp is one of the disease okay. where platelets will be getting destroyed in our own body 
our own platelets will be getting destroyed in our own body okay so it will come out outside the bone marrow the platelets will come into the blood okay. but it will be destroyed in some organs like spleen so uh, platelet count will be getting lowered even if you transfuse platelets okay. that also will be getting destroyed oh there will be some antibodies formed against the platelets mm -hmm. which will be uh, help, uh, which, which will cause destruction of the platelets is it cure for that uh, there are some medicines uh, you can uh, like itp is a self limiting disease which can be cured uh, in children most of the time like 60 percentage of children have cure rates okay. but whereas in adults only some 20 to 40 percent will be getting cured with itp all others will turn into something called chronic itp oh chronic itp means this kind of low platelets will be persisting for more than one year okay almost 12 months they have more than 12 months they'll be having this problem and in those patients uh, the platelet may improve at some time and again if there is some triggers like fevers or something then it can again come down okay so there are some medicines which can control the disease okay. but uh, not not 100% curative therapy is not there is there any case that uh, any foods can increase this uh, platelet count in itp yeah uh, there is a myth that uh, there are many uh, food stuffs like kiwi okay. uh, goat milk okay and uh, some papaya leaf and papaya leaf extracts okay these all will be increasing the platelet count okay. but uh, actually speaking there is no studies <laughs> there is no research fully okay. that these uh, kind of uh, food stuffs will increase the platelet but one thing is they can try all these things okay. nothing has a side effect goat milk will not cause any problem to the patient okay. uh, papaya leaf will not cause any problem and same uh, kiwi also will not cause some problem yeah. they can try we ask our patients to try if they want okay. but it never increases we have not seen any cases where that the platelet has increased, increased, increased with, with these okay. stuffs so is there, there is any cure for that for, for long term cure is there is no long, like? there is no long term cure for itp but in case of some diseases like dengue where the platelet counts come down it is only transient it will improve after some time just assume that if my grandfather has this cll okay uh, it, he if he di diagnosed uh, since last 3 months okay. what if he has taken any i mean if hasn't taken any uh, treatments okay. so what would the process and how uh, when when we can take the um, further treatment okay mm, cll is a kind of blood cancer okay and uh, we say chronic lymphocytic leukemia where uh, there will be a lot of wbcs in the uh, blood lymphocytes it can go more than 1 lakh it can go more than 2 lakhs like that also okay but usually all cll patients will not require treatment okay only certain stages of cll where uh, platelet count is coming down yeah anemia is there and it is not controlled with any other medicines like steroids initially they give so it's not controlled with that or uh, if the patient is having weight loss uh, unexplained fevers so this all are some symptoms where we have to start treatment in cll other than that only with the wbc count we are not starting the treatment in blood cancer uh, treatment you used to do bone marrow transplantation yeah so how do you do that uh, bone marrow transplant is uh, usually done first of all we give some chemotherapy to the patient mm -hmm. uh, so we have two types of transplant basically autologous uh, bone marrow transplant and allo uh, allogenous uh, bone marrow transplant okay in autologous transplant patients own cells are given to the patient So own stem cells are taken patient will be given some chemotherapy mm -hmm. so that any residual disease uh, any residual blood cancer cells which are there in the bone marrow will be getting destroyed okay. and then patient's stem cells will be reinfused to the patient okay. so that is called autologous bone marrow transplant it is usually done in some diseases like uh, multiple myeloma okay. and sometimes lymphomas okay. lymphomas which have record okay. first time chemotherapy Uh, they have got uh, cured after that again second time when the disease comes we call it as relapse so in those relapsed lymphomas we do autologous uh, bone marrow transplant whereas in case of allogenous uh, bone marrow transplant 
it is uh, something like other one donor will be donating the blood cells, uh, stem cells and that stem cells are given to the patient. Okay. Patient will be given some chemotherapy which is called as conditioning regimen okay. and after that patient's bad stem cells will be destroyed. Bone marrow stem cells will be destroyed in the patient and then the good stem cells which are there from the donor that will be given to the patient. Okay. So, bone marrow transplant is basically done like this. It is uh, not uh, like uh, other transplants where you need a surgery. Okay. It's not like that. Okay. Is there any difficulty in this or is there any side effects after this? Uh, bone marrow transplant uh, is curative for many cancers. Okay. Uh, so, after bone marrow transplant there can be some problems called GBHD like uh, graft versus host disease like that. We have medicines to control all those things and bone marrow transplant also has a risk that the disease can come back later in life in very few cases, okay. not uh, everyone, but there are side effects with bone marrow transplantation which should be managed by a transplant physician. Okay. You said that in the process of treatment you take the same stem cells uh, from the same person. Yeah. So what if you are taking the stem, uh, these stem cells from the different person like donor, yeah. is there any difficulties with them? Uh, usually donors don't get any difficulty. We give some injections for the donors to bring the stem cells from the bone marrow to the blood so that it will be easy to collect from the blood. Okay. So those injections can cause some minor side effects like body pain like that. But that can be managed with uh, some medicines, painkillers like that. And it usually donor will not have much problem. Okay. So what Usually are, it is safe procedure for a donor. Okay. So what are the things that you, uh, I mean, um, what are the things that you, you will take that, I, I don't know how to ask you this question. So, what are the things that you consider while you are taking the donor, like while you are taking the donor to give for, this, uh, for transplantation? Donor, yeah, transplantation okay. What are the things that you will mainly observe or you will consider? Okay. Uh, one thing is the whether the donor is fit physically that we have to see. He should not have any cardiac problems, any renal problem, liver problem where it can affect his health. Yeah. Okay. So, that should be ruled out first. And second thing, before we are selecting a person as a donor, there is something called HLA matching. Okay. HLA matching is like how you match the blood group. Okay. A positive with A positive, like that for transfusion. For stem cells, we see something called HLA matching. And that is uh, done for the patient and the donor. Okay. If they are fully matched, we take. Okay. In, nowadays, the techniques have improved that even if a related person is there and uh, if 50% of genes are uh, matching in HLA genes, then we can take them and we call it as haploidentical donor. Okay, okay. And apart from that, we do some blood tests where uh, CMV infections are there or not. Okay. And any other HIV, HPSAG or uh, HCV infection is there or not in the donor and then we choose the donor. Okay. Thank you so much. You gave a lot of uh, information to us and thank you so much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.